Howdy guys, we're getting set up on this job. So this is uh, the arms to that uh, Cat 980G that we were, uh, we've been working on. So this is generally in pretty decent shape with the exception that they blew, I don't know if you can see in there, i trying to get my flashlight on it. So the bushing in this side for the uh, lift cylinder had broke and you see hammered it all up. Bell mowed the holes, missing a bunch of material around the edge of the hole here. Um, this side looks pretty good. They put a gouge in it, cutting the bushing out, but that ain't gonna break or make it. I did went ahead and uh, buffed this up with a flap wheel just to clean it up, and then went in there. There's a little bit of squish in here. You can see just you can just barely feel that where the uh, grease groove in the middle. So I measured. They lost about a uh, thou and a half a press or so. I don't think that's enough to justify boring that. It's got plenty of press on it yet. So we're going to go ahead and run that. I think that I came up with an average in about seven thousandths of press on a five inch bushing or four and three quarter inch bushing, which that'll get along just fine. So anyway, the rest of them I think are going to run. I should check this one now that I'm looking at it. That seems a little ugly. I can see where there was uh, quite a bit of rust out here. I'm kind of curious why. Rust between the bushing and the... Uh, bore kind of seems to me like it would indicate that it was not actually making full contact. But I'll measure that up to see if that needs any attention. Otherwise, we are just cranking along here. I'm getting ready to make some... Uh, lineup spacers so I'll show you what I do with that in a minute Brought here to the truck. all right so here's what we got um where did I set them so I get this one I've turned on a bit I get these uh, PVC pipe flanges and I slap them in my little lathe here and turn these bore them to two and uh, two and a quarter to match my boring bar and then turn the outside to slip in there So when I've got a hole like that where just the outside edges are blown This is a really fast and I'm not gonna say you're splitting tenths, but pretty doggone accurate way of getting these things cut to uh, or Lined up on the center line anyhow, so I'm gonna get this stuffed in a lathe and uh, do a little machine and get some lineup spacers here. All right, we're gonna see if we can shoot a little video of this process I need to adjust the belt on my lathe. And this large diameter, I'm stalling it out, slipping the belt if I uh, try and take very much material at all. I'll see the biggest downside to this is I end up with snarly balls of this stuff all over the place in my truck. Doesn't matter how much I try to pick them up, collect them up, they end up everywhere. Seven sixty one. I have the other ones two thou over. 
So I can take another hundred here easily. All right, I'm gonna go see how this fits. All right, so, forgot to document it, but I made uh, my oversizing cut through there already, and then uh, this edge was pretty beat up, so I ran a few hand beads around there just because there wouldn't be anything for my bore welder to start on there otherwise. Um, and see, I stuck a chunk of grade two bolt into the uh, grease hole. If that goes as planned, what I should be able to do is the uh, Material over top of that hole should be thin enough when I get done cutting that I smack that thing with a hammer and drive it on through there and punch it through my weld. So we'll see. Um, if you don't do that, the weld that flows into that hole because it chills really fast has a nasty tendency to be drill wrecking hard. But something I've been wanting to do and I keep forgetting to is uh, get some different size uh, carbon rods and try sticking a carbon rod in the hole because I think that's really the answer. But so far, I haven't remembered to do that. So anyway, we're getting set up here to start some bore welding. about uh, oh, three quarters of the way through the bore welding. So far so good, haven't had any major hiccups with it, so unless you run into a bad snag, should be done welding in about another 10 minutes or so, and then we'll be ready to set back up and start boring it. All right, well, we've got her cutting. Looking pretty good. I was uh, fighting some loss of shielding gas there at the end. My tip was getting plugged up. I knew something was going on, but uh, pushed to the end. And thankfully, the porosity didn't get me. I got a few little bubbles out near the edge, but nothing too outrageous. Yeah, you can see, uh, maybe you can. Yeah, down inside there, you can see some pretty good goobers. Starting to block up the uh, gas flow. Doesn't look too bad now because as soon as I pull the tip off, it, all the pieces fall out. Anyway, I am still trying to convince them they need to sell me this. Kearney and Trekker 2D. This thing is so cool and it's sitting here literally hardly if ever gets used. 
And I really think this thing ought to be in my shop getting some uh, use made of that cool rotary head function. But I always kind of hem and haw and say, well, they think they use it. So one of these days, I'm going to pester them enough they're going to sell me that thing. All right, well, we got this bore done, I think, but it's still pretty hot, so we're going to leave the uh, born rig set up on it because we're going to be back tomorrow to work on this set. So, seeing as how we're coming back anyway, I'm going to leave it set up on there. Um, I'm not quite sure how much this bore is going to shrink when it cools. I would say just from the way it feels, probably a thou or so. If that's all it does, then we're going to leave it be. But I want to double check it. I mean, I would normally rip it off and move on and figure I'd hone it if it shrank. But seeing as we're uh, coming back anyway, no point tearing it down when it's all lined up with it nice right now. So Anyway, we'll see what we get when we come back tomorrow. Howdy, everybody. So... This project has taken a bit of a twist and a turn. Um, I got this bore done. It's uh, bored out, ready to go. Um, it's maybe a little on the tight side. I gotta check the clearances between the uh, bushing and the pin and decide if it's gonna crush too much or if I just stomp her in there because I'd really rather have more press if I can get away with it anyways. But if it's no go, I'll go ahead and hone it out a bit. But Anyway, so as you can see, we're getting a bar set up up here. They decided that this set of pinholes had more slap than they liked in it. So, we're getting ready to bore and weld, or weld and bore, this set of holes now. Um, I should be all kinds of excited about it, because work is work, but I am so swamped right now that this is uh, going to do ugly stuff to my schedule, because I've got other jobs that I'm supposed to be getting into. So, anyways... Long and short of it is, you can see, so these holes, a bit egg-shaped, and there's a unique problem with this. This thing's a casting, and there's um, draft built into casting, so there's a taper on all these faces. Past experience has taught me that that really screws with getting properly centered up if you use lineup cones, because you don't have a flat face, you got, I don't know what to call it, parallax, but at any rate, you'll end up not on the actual center line. Now, if you knew that it was going to... Uh, move off center by some nice even amount maybe you wouldn't care but the problem is the casting can be different between the two sides you end up cockeyed so what I do is I go down to Menards and I get these are some PVC pipe flanges and I take those suckers and machine them in my lathe to make lineup spacers um, because these holes are egg shaped like that's a five inch pin these are actually machined to fifty thousandths over five inch so that they're uh, tap fit in there. Now one thing, it's a little hokey maybe, but they're just flexible enough that like the holes a bit out around and you just make them a little tight, you can smack them in there anyways and they'll center themselves up. But as in this instance, what that does is locks the bar up in there because it's kind of squished that thing a little bit. But it works really good and I gradually save these things every time I make a set like this and I keep carrying them around with me. And a lot of times at some point down the road, I'll discover another job that they're kind of close for or I'll uh, if I get one where it's just a little smaller I'll take and cut half of it to a smaller size and make a uh, basically a step line up bushing out of it but. so anyhow that's what we're going to get set up and do is get that set of holes and then uh, they also want me to press all the bushings into this thing so that'll be a minute or two because I've got let's see here four five six so 10 bushings between the arms and the bucket that have to get pressed in. And then I didn't think to ask them if they wanted me squishing bushings in the link. Because um, that would be, put me up to 14. But anyhow, I'll bring you guys back when there's something worth seeing. But just wanted to show you, no rest for the wicked. Alright, we're taking our uh, oversized cut here. Cleaning up the hole to go after it with a bore welder. This is 50 over on the side, and it's just not quite clean enough in the worst spot, but we'll hit it with a flap wheel and uh, clean up anything that it doesn't get this way. It's generally looking pretty good, though. Definitely help tell it's an, a uh, steel casting. They work hard, and it's got some hard spots in it from getting pounded on over the years, but 
nothing we can't cut with carbide. It's just, you can tell it's tougher in some areas. But anyway, we'll let her cut through there. We're gonna cut uh, that pair of bores in one stroke, then move over and cut through that pair, and then we'll set the bore welder up. So we've got some interesting developments here. This thing was cut and harder than Hobbs. I was having a hard time figuring out why, and now I think I understand. I don't know for sure on this side. I believe, yeah, you can see it there. See the zebra stripe? Just finally realized what I'm dealing with. This has been welded and bored once before. So, it's not the end of the world, except that it is a steel casting. And the issue with that is that these things tend to get a little tough. So. I'm cutting through the transition zone is what I'm doing, so it's definitely uh, really some gnarly cutting. There's no two ways about it. I don't know if you can see it in this bore, but see some funny, uh, if I can get it running, glaring it does. See the funny little pock marks in there? I'm finding some voids in the weld, and then you see some spots where, man, is that hard, like, when I first entered this side of the hole, it must have been pretty common for it to be a bit on the cold side when you start your weld. Holy smokes, was that ever tough. But we got to her, a little rough on the carbide, but we got her, so. Anyway, the first time that I know for certain that I've been on a casting that had been welded previously, so. It's gonna be an adventure, I'm just glad we're getting it. See what she does now when she, uh, she is just starting to cut here. This isn't sounding nearly as outrageous as the other one was. All right, well, this is the last uh, bore to cut and then we're ready to tear down and set up the welder. All right, finished the welding up. This one is still pretty warm, so we're starting on this end. This is, uh, I mean, fairly lukewarm, just above ambient. Anyway, this is my first pass through here. I'm uh, taking it within 60,000 to finish dimension. I'm cutting through this one and that one all in one pass. That's the one I'm a little worried about. Really fighting some ugly stuff at the beginning of that. I'm a little worried we're going to have some veracity in there. We're going to have to decide if it's bad enough to cut it back out and re-weld it or if we're living with it. And I want to know that right up front. So. Anyway, that's what we're up to. Alright, so, finished boring this set this morning. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Anyhow, I just got uh, done fitting the pin, so I was shooting for five thousandths worth of clearance on the pin, um, and I got that right on the nose to fit just how you would expect them to. Nice and uh, snug, but they slide in easy. Nobody ever appreciates it when I uh, fit these hammer fit and tight on stuff like this with these Z-Links. Where you gotta fight with them and get them lined up and they're big and they're heavy, hold them in position. Makes people mad if the uh, pin doesn't slide in pretty easy, so. Anyway, and I just found out something interesting the other day. I saw, um, finally saw some build prints for a uh, JRB quick connector and found out that on a 100 millimeter pin, their print calls out almost eight, that, well it's, in metric it's 0.2 millimeters so just shy of eight thousandths worth of clearance on the pin and the tolerance is plus or minus four thousandths so when they make one it's got anywhere from let me see here that would be four thousandths to as much as twelve thousandths of clearance right from the factory brand new I was floored so anyway so with me having my five thousandths here on a uh, five mil or five inch pin, which is substantially bigger than 100 millimeters, I'm still way, way at the tight end of uh, JRB's tolerances. So, anyway, that was just an interesting discovery. So, we're gonna get this thing wrapped up, press some bushings in the rest of the holes, and get out of here so we can get some other work done.
prepared to get a movie against them. I'll sit here a few minutes, especially this instant. Um, these holes were, that one was pretty good. This one is weird, it's a little bellow on each side. And normally I would say it has to be a welded board, but it was obvious for the fact that there was rust in there. That it actually was from a previous pushing failure. The pushing to in there were doing just fine under the circumstances. So the size of the quick press is recommended. They had to board well that would have survived just fine that way last time. So anyway, what I do is put a little lock plate on it.
All right, everybody, that's the end of this party. See, we got bushings and seals and pins stuffed in all over the place. Got the uh, bottom four bushings stuffed in the bucket. They are ready for reassembly. So we are out of here. Get ready to go hook onto the trailer and buzz out of here. So we're gonna latch on, head to the next job.